Hey and welcome back to another video and in today's video we're going to be talking about unit testing you know for beginners so essentially we're just going to go through briefly at the start what unit testing is so with unit testing it basically allows us to validate our logic so what do I mean by that so it basically allows us to make sure that the code that we write actually works and makes sense so let's say for example if you have some complex like logic to calculate the discount for a voucher you don't want to have to manually test it for every single state and um, what you want to do is write a unit test to validate that your calculation works so what we're going to do we're going to actually unit test our onboarding app that we built before if you've not done it and um, well, if you're not sorry i'll leave a link at the top here so you can go and check it out and we're basically going to validate a few test cases so so with test cases essentially they're just like requirements that we want to run and make sure that our app validates against and if it passes a test case then it means that it's working so some of the test cases we have to validate are the following so we want to make sure that so we want to make sure that it finds the right plist file and successfully decodes it we also want to make sure that our plist class fails when it is passed an invalid name and it fails to decode it as well we want to make sure that our onboarding content manager successfully returns an array of objects we want to make sure that our onboarding content manager fails as well when it's passed an invalid file we also want to make sure that our limit in our onboarding content manager is less than one and we also want to make sure that if our onboarding content manager fails to decode then we essentially want to return a value less than zero so what we're going to do now is we're going to jump straight into our project and we're going to look at how we can add unit tests to our export project all right cool so as you can see we're in our onboarding um project and what we need to do is we need to actually add a unit testing target so in order to do that just go to the left hand panel here and then click on your project you'll see a um, section here called targets so we want to add a unit testing target so we hit a little plus button down here and if you just basically scroll down you should see a unit testing bundle so we want to add that so hit next and then just basically add that cool so once we add our unit testing once we add our unit testing um, button, um, target you should see a new target here and you should also see that you have a brand new folder as well so just to briefly explain this so these two have been separated to two separate folders so essentially because they're two separate targets they're two separate modules so they don't actually interact with each other at all they don't know about each other so we're gonna have to come we'll come on to that a bit later but we'll explain how we can get our onboarding code into our tests so the first thing that we go unit test is our plist so in our onboarding tests i'm just going to delete this file because we don't actually want this generated file so just delete that and then i'm going to click new folder or new group and then i'm going to basically call it plist tests or plist actually we call it plist and i'm going to create a new swift file in here called plist tests and make sure that you're on make sure you only select the onboarding test targets not both of them we don't need an object to see header so don't create that all right cool all right cool so i basically just wrote out the boilerplate of what it is that we want here so the first thing we want to talk about is this framework here so xc test is xcode's um framework for unit testing so we need to import that in or else we can't actually validate our tests and then what we do here is we use this um annotation called testable import so essentially what this line is saying is that i want to basically import everything inside of our apps onboarding folder into this test class so we can access all our classes within here all right cool and then we basically define our class and because it subclasses this class we basically get these two functions called setup with error and tear down so setup with error is basically where you set up your um objects and tear down is where you basically clean and remove your objects so the reason why you want these two is because when you run a test case you basically want it to basically be set up um, in a fresh state and you want it to be teared down in a fresh state so you don't have any um, remaining data from a previous test that's run so the first thing that we want to do now is we want to actually set up our plist manager implementation class in here and actually write some tests so i'm just going to basically type out the setup and um, tear down and then i'll actually write out one um, test case and break it down
All right, cool. So let's just break this down. So at the top here, we defined a our plist manager implementation, and like I said before, we basically set it up. So we set it up here when we initialize it, and when we tear it down, we deinitialize it by setting it to nil. And we've actually wrote our first test case here. So we have a function called test um, successful decoding onboarding plist. So it's important to note that when you're writing a unit test in, it always needs to start off with the word test. So Xcode can pick up, it's a test. If I remove this keyword test at the, at the start, you'll see that we don't get the play button to run the unit test anymore. So make sure that it always starts off with test or else it'll just make this a function. So I'm just gonna add that back in. And you can see that we got a little highlighter here to basically run our unit test. So when you're writing a naming for a unit test as well, you want it to describe what it is you're actually testing. So in our case, we're, we're basically testing a test case of testing that our manager, uh, plist manager successfully converts our plist and um, decodes it properly and we get the right amount of items in our array. So you can see here that we're able to use this plist manager class because we've imported it from onboarding. So we're going to actually get the plist file as well from onboarding. So in my plist file, if I just go into it, I actually have four items inside of it. So I want to test that this function successfully gets the plist and it basically returns four items in it. So let's just run this now and see what happens. Cool. And as you can see, our test case passes. But how does this know that it's passed? Well, we basically have this function here called XCT assert equal. And this is part of the XCT test framework. And what this function is doing is it's basically comparing if these two are the same. And if they are the same, then this will pass. So let's say, for example, if I change this from four to one, and I just run it. You'll see now that it fails and it's actually telling me specifically that the reason why it's failed is because four. So this is four is not equal to one. Let's see, fix our first unit test. So change this back to four. And then what we want to do is we want to actually write the alternative test to basically make sure that this actually successfully fails to decode an invalid plist file. So essentially a plist file that doesn't exist or it's been spelled incorrectly. So let's write a test out for that now. All right, cool. So you can see now we've actually wrote another test here, but this time it's called unsuccessful, unsuccessful decoding onboarding plist. And we're trying to get a plist called Lucky Charms, because I, I love Lucky Charms, it's the best serial level. But essentially Lucky Charms does not exist in this project. So what should happen is this should return an empty array of objects. So we're basically comparing to see if it gives us zero. So what I'm going to do is rather than selecting this one and then selecting this one, I'm actually going to go to the top of our class file here and hit play. And what it's going to do is go run all the test cases in this class. So let's do that now. Cool. And as you can see now, all our test cases have passed for our plist test. So the next thing that we need to do is we actually need to actually unit test our onboarding content manager and actually make sure that it's actually successfully decoded as well. So what I want to do is create a new folder here and just create, create a new group and just call it onboarding. And then we'll go create a new file in here called onboarding content tests. All right, cool. So now we have our class um, which is our XC test case. Um, we're importing standard stuff at the top here. We're setting up our plist manager. I'm actually testing whether our onboarding content manager implementation successfully gets the right amount of items out of the array. So what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna run this test case and see what happens. All right, cool. And as you can see, the test case passes because there's four items in our um, onboarding plist. So what we actually wanna do is we actually want to test if this fails to decode a plist that doesn't exist. So we want it to basically return zero, but we've got a problem. So if we go into our onboarding content manager implementation class, we've hard coded and defined the plist here. So we can't, this will actually never fail because this file always exists and we don't want to start writing some code to delete this and, you know, add it all over again. So what we need to do is we basically need to create something called a mock. So essentially a mock is just like a fake object that you can use to basically help you with your test cases. So 
in our case what we're going to do is we're going to use the protocol that we defined here see there was a plan for this see so we're going to use the protocol that we defined here to essentially define a fake object that fails and gets a fake um, plist. So let's do that now. So in our onboarding folder, I'm going to basically create a class called onboarding um, content mock implementation. So what we've basically got here is we've basically got our mock class. So we've got this class, which we're going to use to basically fake our um, decoding of a fake plist file. So you can see here, our protocol allows us to basically get the same implementation that we would from an, our actual onboarding content class. So we've basically done the same thing here with a limit where we we'll subtract the item count minus one. And in our items setup, we basically pass in a fake plist file. So this file here, Fruit Loops, doesn't actually exist in the project. As you can see, I like American cereal to the point where I like to even eat it dry. So don't judge me on that. <laughs> but essentially, we're basically decoding a fake PLS file. So we want this class specifically to fail. So now what we're going to do is we're going to basically use this mock object in our unit test. All right, cool. So now we've brought our test for this. So we basically wrote an unsuccessful test for onboarding decoding, and we basically created an in instance of our mock um, object so this is our mock class and now we're basically comparing if the items are equal to zero but notice how we can easily inject our plist manager into our mock object so this is the power of um, dependency injection and why you want to use protocols to basically you know separate and define your implementation so you can do stuff like this so now what we're going to do is we're going to run this test and see if it passes and successfully gives us zero items. All right, cool. And you can see now that this test has passed as well. So the final test that we need to write is we need to actually test whether our limit is actually working in the successful at the failed state. So let's do that. All right, cool. So we've now got our two new test cases. So we're testing to see if it, the limit for a successful decoding is free because remember we have four items in our array programming starts from zero so we actually want um to basically see if it's free and in our unsuccessful we're actually using a different assert this time so this time we're actually using the less than so essentially what we're saying here is in our mock when it fails to decode we want to basically make sure that the limit is less than zero so in our case the limit should be um, negative one but if we just click into this assert less than and just look at all the different possibilities so you can see that there's loads of different things you can assert and then um, check out so i definitely check out the documentation for this assert stuff um in terms of like what you can compare but we have two test cases here so what i want to do is i'm going to basically run this whole class to see if they all pass so let's go to the top here and hit run and let's see if they all pass all right cool so now they all pass but what I actually want to do now is I actually want to validate that all the tests that I wrote in my unit tests actually um, are validated and run successfully. So there's two ways of doing this. You can actually go to the little icon here, which is the test navigator, and you can actually hit the play button here on your actual target. So if I hit the play button here, this will actually run the unit test on all my targets. And as you can see, they've all passed. Alternatively, what I can do is I can go to product and then go to test. And that'll do the exact same thing. Cool. And alternately, again, I'm treating you. So we can actually run um, command and hit you on our keyboard for a short book, shortcut. And this will actually run all our test cases as well. All right, cool. So now we can see here, when we go to our report, we can actually see, we go to the report here and hit test. We can actually see all our test cases here. But what we actually want to do is we actually want to see how much of our code is actually being tested. And in order to do that, we need to basically use something called code coverage. Now, to enable code coverage, all you need to do is go to onboarding and then edit scheme on your target. So this should be your main app target here. And then what you want to do is you want to basically, I've already set this up, but what you want to do is you want to actually select and um, gather coverage and on yours, it will be on all targets by default. So it'll look like this by default. Rather than collecting it on every single target, because what this will do is it'll collect it on every single target, including your service extensions and all that, unless you want to test that. In our case, 
we just want to test our main app so we just go to choose some targets and then you might not have this by default so i'm going to delete that hit the plus button and then select the target that you want to test so in our case we want to test the um, the actual app itself hit add close it so run a test so run all your test cases so i'm just going to do product and then test cool and then go to the report tab and you should see a new option here called coverage so what code coverage basically means is it's basically how much of your code are you actually testing so a rule of thumb is you want to try and aim for above 80 percent um code coverage in your app i mean if you have 75 percent, it's not like it's bad and someone's gonna come and you know repossess your house we just open up our app here we can actually see all the code in our app that we've actually unit tested now the two main files that we care about is the plist manager and the onboarding content manager as you can see here these two files basically have a 100 percent test coverage so if i just click into this now it should show us all the code that we're actually testing so all this code is being tested properly which is great and in our plist manager as well we've got 100 percent coverage so you can see here we test all our um logic which is really good so you want to try and aim for that now i am going to have another video where we actually do test our U ui classes because i know that we didn't write any unit tests for this and they're not hitting 100 so we want to actually unit test that but that's everything from today's video so if you want to if you're just watching this video from the start and you've not actually saw um how i built the onboarding screens again i'll leave a link at the top here so you can check that out um, as usual as well, um, I'd appreciate if you give this video a thumbs up as well. If you have any feedback as well, leave it in the comment section below. And as usual, I appreciate if you, if you subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell for any updates as well. That's everything from me today. I'll catch you all in a bit. Deuces.